What is happening, people? It is your boy Brad here. Welcome along to the big Brad channel, and it is not an episode of FIFA. <laughs> yes, I will be streaming back streaming Wednesday, just to let you all know. I will be back streaming Wednesday as per usual, usual time between half past 10 and 11 o'clock in the morning. So look out for that. It's a two part episode. But this is not why I'm here today. Well, reason why I'm here today is to review and give my honest opinion of WrestleMania 38. Now, the dust has settled. The night is over. Well, the two nights are over, shall I say now. Because that's going to be the new norm for now. Right up until probably the day that I die. The WrestleMania uh, is now going to be a two-night spectacular. I don't think it'll ever go back to a one. Because next year... WrestleMania 39 is set as a two-night event, which, of course, is... Well, it's good for some people, but if you can't stay awake for both events, then so be it. But anyway, I'm here today to review and give my honest opinion of what I thought of the show, and I will give you my rating of what I thought of the show at the end. Uh, but let's just jump straight into the ball, shall we, and say that... The event for me, it was full of drama. It was full of drama right from the get-go. It was a really, really well thought out event, but some of it was a bit hit and miss. But most of it was good. Most of it was good. But it was a decent enough event to say that WrestleMania deserves to be where it is on the like the whole of wrestling as the granddaddy of them all. The Biggest stage where WWE superstars and any any performer wants to perform. I mean, it's the pinnacle of wrestling, is WrestleMania. But we as wrestling fans, we know this stuff already. We know exactly um, how it goes and what happens. We know it's scripted and all that, but we don't care. We just love the nostalgia. We love everything about it. We love professional wrestling all together as a whole. I mean, I love wrestling. I have loved wrestling... Since 2003, I've been a fan of wrestling since 2003, and I'll even admit that. My first wrestling show, like, what I watched was 2003, because that's when I was brought into the wrestling world. I mean, I did obviously get history lessons, like, I educated myself on all what had happened before, like, things like the Monday Night Wars and the... Montreal Screwjob, etc, etc, that changed the wrestling business and the landscape of the way it went forever. And I mean, the PG era, when they went PG in 2008, that just really did change a lot of things. That really did change a lot of things. But we are here to review and um, give an honest review of what I thought of the show as a whole. So let's start off with WrestleMania Saturday, night one, April 2nd. And um, we begin with the SmackDown Tag Team titles as the Usos took on the team of Shinsuke Nakamura and Rick Boogs. First thing I want to say is I hope Rick is okay and hopefully he's recovering well. Um, tore his um, quadricep and um, did something to his patella, which was confirmed later on in the night. But um, it was a solid enough match, an opening ma a good opening match. A good tag team opener. And um, the Usos won. Um, after what had happened, it was called on the fly, basically. It was called an audible. And they said that they, Nakamura had to do the match on his own as Rick Boos couldn't continue. So Nakamura did do the match as, on his own. And obviously, this planned finish was um, kept the way it was. But it was a solid enough match. A good solid opener. Then we get on to um, Drew McIntyre versus Happy Carbon. Drew McIntyre came out on top, as everyone would have predicted, but this was historic. It was historic. It was a good, solid match. Don't get me wrong. It was a good match, and there was one historic moment. I mean, I didn't know this myself, but the end of days, Happy Carbon's finisher has never been kicked out of. Never. Never been kicked out of. But at WrestleMania, Drew McIntyre... He raised that shoulder off the, mat, off the mat and kicked out for the first time ever. And then he hit the uh, Future Shock DDT, um, Claymore Kick, 1, 2, 3. And then he did something, well, which most people probably called stupid. Most people probably called it entertaining. He took his sword, uh, Angela, 
and slice the rope. He sliced the middle and top ropes. And then they had to revamp the ring and it didn't even look right. It looked really horrible the way they reconstructed it. But they had a short period of time to get it done before the next match. So, but obviously Drew McIntyre was winning that match and it was a good solid match for Drew. And hopefully he does get now um, put into the main event scene because he is a main event caliber superstar. Then we go on to The Miz and Logan Paul versus The Mysterios. Now this match... It was okay. It was okay. It did what it had to do. I mean, Logan, he didn't fail to disappoint. He may have looked a bit rough with his hands, the way he was throwing them here and there, but really, I think he did a good job, and most people will agree with me on that because he did have a good, like, solid tag team partner in the Miz who could guide him through the match and probably carry him through most of it, but Logan did hold his own. I mean, the way he hit those three amigos, I mean, that was done with such force and it was it was really good it was really good and uh, the way the Miz turned on him at the end when he was raising his hands in the air hand in the air and the Miz just stopped looked at him and then hit the skull crushing finale could we see a match at Wrestlemania Backlash who knows but the Miz and Logan Paul did beat the Mysterios thanks to Miz getting a blind tag the Mysterios hit the 619 double 619 on um, oh um, Logan Paul then they hit the frog splashers and then Miz came in, body slammed Dominic onto Ray, and then hit the skull crushing finale for the 1 2 3. Then we go on to the Raw Women's Championship match between Bianca Belair and champion at the time, Becky Lynch. Now, Bianca did win this match, and I think the right person did win this match. I mean, Becky, she's been amazing since she came back, and um, Bianca got a retribution for the 26 second loss at um, SummerSlam, which for me was wrong. That was wrong. That was basically like a burial. For Bianca Belair. Not the right way to go. But the right woman won this match. It was a really solid match. Between two of the best women. On the roster right now. I've got to say. Bianca and Becky are up there. Two of the best in the business. And I mean they put on a show. They really did put on a show. And uh, I was happy with the match. It was absolute quality for a women's match. And that's exactly what you want at Wrestlemania. You want those quality matches that can lift the crowd, bring them up, put them on the edge of their seats. I mean, there was lots of that. There was lots of that during WrestleMania. Edge of the seat stuff. And I mean, it was right that Bianca Belair did win the Raw Women's Championship of Becky Lynch. And now she can go out and uh, maybe um, focus on her family a bit more. And um, maybe stay away for a bit and then come back. You never know. But Bianca does defeat Becky Lynch thanks to the KOD. And 1-2-3, it was a really good match. And the attire that Bianca wore was really, really nice. I love the attire that Bianca wore to the ring. Entrance was a bit mm, meh for me, but it was good. It was good, but it mm, wasn't really that great. But then we get to my personal favourite match of the entire card. The entire card, all together. Not just night one. Night one, it stole the show. By a mile. Seth freaking Rollins versus... Da, 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 da. Who was it? Who was it? We got to Seth Rollins' entrance. He got to the ring. He was waiting, prancing around, pacing like a lion in a cage. Say, come on, don't make me wait. Then the pyro went off. Then the lights went out. Seth was in the ring light. Who the hell am I facing here? Then the lights go out. And then, over the speakers, you hear that one phrase. Wrestling has more than one royal family, and then the place just absolutely exploded. It absolutely exploded. Cody Rhodes is back in WWE. I cannot believe I'm actually saying that. Cody Rhodes, back in WWE. After everything that he did, after slagging off WWE for so long, after saying what he said, after he broke the throne at Double or Nothing, after he said what he said about Hunter and everyone else, he's come back home. It's come full circle and Dusty, he will be looking down on his boy right now, his young little boy, and he will be absolutely proud. He put on a performance at WrestleMania. Cody Rhodes is back. I am so glad about that. And as soon as it broke, as soon as it broke that he'd signed the contract, I was like, he's going to be Seth's opponent. Garen Dante, and they teased it for weeks with the Cody chance. The, uh, the commentators giving a few hints like, when Corey Graves said something about Seth Rollins' 
dreams and admiration for a match at Mania have been dashed. Reference to his dashing Cody Rhodes gimmick, and then there, so and I think it was Jimmy Smith that said um, his vision is turning into a nightmare. The gimmick, the American nightmare, which I am absolutely glad WWE has brought over. My God, the moment that that Kingdom music hit. I was I was all over the place. I was literally all over the place, man. It was unbelievable. The reaction of the crowd, they were behind it. The moment that it said, as soon as it said, wrestling has more than one royal family, the place just exploded. It literally exploded. And Seth was laughing and joking in the ring. Then up came Cody through the ramp, like he did in AEW. It was just unbelievable to see. I mean... Cody Rhodes back in WWE, who would have thought it? Who would have even thought it that Cody Rhodes would be back in a WWE ring? I didn't think it was possible after everything that he did. And he's one of the co-founders of AEW and he built that company. He built that company. Obviously, he was one of the um, the top guys there. I mean, ever since he left Cody Rhodes, he's reinvented himself big time with this American Nightmare gimmick. I have watched him since he left. And my God, I've never seen an improved superstar like it. I mean, Drew McIntyre, he left, came back as a different human being. But Cody, he left looking like this. <coughs> Fucking doing a Stardust gimmick. What the fuck was that? And then it was just a basic gimmick infringement to Goldust. But then he shows up at WrestleMania, as I predicted from the get-go. Ever since PW Insider... Broke the news that Cody had signed two or three weeks ago before it actually before they announced it. I was like, nah, he's penned in, he's in. And then there was all the rumours going around that he was backing out, that it was going to be Shane McMahon versus Cody, no, versus, Co- versus Seth, sorry. Shane versus Seth, there was rumours about Bray Wyatt, all these rumours. I was like, nah, fuck you, nope, it's going to be Cody. And the music hit. 21 minute match, stole the show. Cody Rhodes beat Seth freaking Rollins. Some of the moves in that match, the Cody cutter, Jesus Christ. He leaps off the top rope, catches his opponent in an RKO. Wow. And then he hit three crossroads to end the match. And he even did his dad's bionic elbow. That was an absolutely beautiful tribute. The punches and the elbow to the head, beautifully done, beautifully done. And Cody came out on top. What a moment. The best moment of the night and the best moment of the whole card. Until I get to the main event, of course, of night two. (laughs) But we go on to um, Charlotte Flair defeating Ronda Rousey. Need I say more? An absolutely trash match. Honestly. Honestly, I was watching that and I was like, that's not the Ronda Rousey that came into WWE. Well, she's going to be rusty. Let's not get it wrong. She is going to be rusty because she's been away from the business since WrestleMania 35. She left after WrestleMania 35 and she hadn't come back since the Rumble. And she did look a bit poor, but that's understandable. But Charlotte, she needed to lose that match. I'm sorry. Charlotte winning that match with a big boot. A big boot. Yeah, Sheamus wins matches with bro kicks, but that's a more effective move than a big boot. I mean, Tess performed a big boot. And won matches. But he delivered it with force. Charlotte hardly delivered it with force. But Charlotte wins the match. Thanks to the big boot. But there was a bit of a screwy finish with the referee being down. And Ronda locked in the armbar. Charlotte was tapping. And then obviously that's when the match ended. But it was an absolutely shocking match. Some of the spots were done horribly. Beck, uh, Charlotte can't be faulted. And nor can Ronda. But both of them looked really sloppy. Didn't look their usual best to me. And... But then we get to the main event. Well, it was a duo main event in a way. The KO show with Stone Cold Steve Austin, the Texas Rattlesnake, the toughest SOB in the WWE, back at WrestleMania. And I mean, as soon as the glass shattered, that stadium, just like the Cody entrance, just exploded. That was the biggest pop of the night by a mile. An absolute mile. It was ridiculous. Stone Cold comes out. Then he runs back, gets his ATV, brings that. <laughs> it was mad. We got to the KO show, and then KO challenges him to a Knowles Bar match. 
And I was like, well, Austin did have his gear on, so I thought, he's coming here for more than just a bloody talk show, I'm telling you. He's coming here for a blooming match. And what happens? 2022. It's 2022. And Stone Cold Steve Austin put on a 13-minute match. Nearly 14 minutes. 57 years old. And he puts in a match like that. I mean, for me, for me, most people said it was crap. He didn't have the zip and the whatever on his punch. But that's understandable. He's 57 years old. For goodness sake, he's not exactly going to have the zip on his punches, is he? I mean, he put on a really good match. Taking bumps on concrete. Let's understand that. A 57-year-old man who broke his neck took a suplex on concrete. And then he was delivering suplexes on the ramp, which ain't exactly plastic, is it? Jesus, but the match ended with a stunner. I thought when KO hit the stunner, I was like, wow, he's going to win. At first, I was like, one, two, and then Austin rolled his shoulder up. I was like, thank God. Then Austin hit the stunner. One, two, three. Beer bash. Stuns Byron Saxton. Doesn't kick him in the... <laughs> doesn't kick him in the um, in the never region this time because on the um, on Raw when he did the 316 day he booted Byron Saxton straight in the um, yeah there he booted him straight square on in the southern region but this time he got him in the stomach and delivered the stunner it was a lovely way to send the whole crowd home happy but now we go on to night 2 Wrestlemania Sunday April 3rd Starting off with the um, Triple Threat Tag Team title match for the Raw Tag Team titles between the RK Bro, uh, the Street Profits, and Alpha Academy. Brilliant match. Brilliant match. Two absolutely glorious RKOs. One from Riddle on Montez Ford, and then the one on Chad Gable from Randy Orton, which obviously clinched the match. And then we got a little bit of a preview of what we're going to see in the near future from Gable Stevens when he... Um, Gable Steve Steveson, he um, he belly to belly threw Chad Gable across the ring, and it was a good match. It was a really good triple threat tag match, and I mean it didn't exactly pull trees, but it was a good match overall and a solid way to start the show again with tag team galore, beautifully done. And RK Bro retained, like I said. Most people were probably going against RK Bro because they were probably going to split them up, but not for me, not for me, and. Um, it was the right choice to give RK Bro the win. And obviously Randy Orton is going to turn on Riddle like soon. Probably leading into SummerSlam, I'd probably presume. But we move on to the next match, which was um, the almighty, the returning almighty, Bobby Lashley, against the Colossus, Omos. What do I think of this match? It wasn't really that great. Omos still looks very, very green. And Bobby Lashley won with a spear. Simple. But it was a it was obviously gonna be a slow match. It wasn't gonna be like your quick pace. Obviously Bomos can't move for a big man, but he, he's so green. So green. He needs to um pick up the basics and really does need to get them fast. Because he's gonna well the Undertaker This man, he tips him to be a big star. And I think he could be if he puts it right. But Bobby Lashley defeated Omos. Good way to bring Bobby back. And maybe shoving him into a title picture as well. Maybe. You never know. Roman versus R Roman versus Bobbles. I'd be down for that. Uh, John Knoxville next against Sami Zayn. <laughs> Comedy fest. That's all I can say about it. Comedy fest. I mean, some of the spots in this match were just mental. I mean, a table covered in mousetraps. Tasers. Pyro setting off in the corner with remote control. Tasers. Wee Man. I mean, every single jackass member was there from the Forever Crew. Wee Man. It was amazing. And he delivered a body slam to Sami Zayn. He delivered a body slam to Sami Zayn. I was like, wow. It was it was a comedy match, and that's exactly what it planned out to be. It wasn't to, to be taken seriously, but it was a good match. And Johnny Knoxville winning was my prediction, and I thought, well... He's obviously going to win, and the Jackass crew are going to get involved somehow and um, finish off Sami Zayn. They finished him off with a really big mousetrap. I mean, you can fit an elephant in that thing. But we move on to the uh, Fatal 4-Way 
tag team match for the Women's Tag Team Championships between Sasha Banks and Naomi, Queen Zelina and Carmella, Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan, and Natalia and Shayna Baszler. Now, this match was, again, another solid tag match. Really, really good. Rhea looked really strong. She looked really good. Um, Liv, um, she did get hurt earlier on, early on in the match. But she soldiered through. And then Sasha and Naomi won the match thanks to a, like a set-up code breaker type thing where Naomi had her up and then she flung her up into the end and Sasha delivered the double knees to... Um, I think it was... Was it Queen Zelina? Or Carmella, I think it was. One of them, anyway. But the end of it one, two, three, and Sasha and Naomi walk out of WrestleMania as the new Women's Tag Team Champions. Now on to the um, Edge versus AJ Styles match. This was the longest match on the card at 26 minutes. For me, it was good. It was really good. Not a show stealer like Cody and Seth, but it was good enough to be up there with the show stealers. I mean, it's second in my list, but it was a good match. It was a really good match, and Edge's fucking entrance, man. Wow. That was something else. But the entrance theme, I'm not really keen on. Some people are like, do like it, but I don't. I don't like the entrance theme. I mean, the beginning bit, when he says, you think you know me, of course you didn't. It just doesn't, nah, it just doesn't work for me. But Edge defeated AJ thanks to a top, well, AJ delivered was going for a phenomenal forearm and then Edge counted it into a spear. But that was before a certain individual called Damien Priest showed up at ringside, just stood there, and AJ was distracted, and then Edge hit the spear, one, two, three. And it could be the start of a new heel faction on Raw. And I think it would be amazing. Because you've got the bloodline on SmackDown, and now you could have this stable with Edge and Damon Priest and a few other people. I think it'd be good. Next match on the card was a really boring one-minute match between Sheamus and Ridge Holland with Butch. Butch. Fucking Butch. Wow. Fucking what a name. And against the New Day, Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston. What a fucking shit match this was. It was just pointless. Didn't even deserve to be on the card. It got moved from night one to night two. But it didn't deserve to be on the card. That, that's all I'm going to say about it. Um, the Pat McAfee versus Austin Theory match. Um, Pat McAfee, star. Star beyond a star. He was amazing in this match. The way he did that springboard onto the superplex was just amazing. The athleticism shown there was just criminal. And then Austin Fury looked good in this match as well. But then obviously he was going for his uh, finish and then Pat McAfee rolled him up for the 1 2 3. And then he challenged Vince McMahon, Mr. McMahon, to a match. And it was that was the rumored match to start with. Mr. McMahon versus Pat McAfee. And pff, a boring 3 minute match and Stone Cold comes out at the end, but there was a botch during this, during this, when Vince and Fury were still in the ring, and Fury's music hit, Vince was like, and he realised that it wasn't Stone Cold's music, that was, he thought that Stone Cold's music was playing, and he put the shot face on, and Fury was like, no, 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 it's my, it's my song, and then Vince was like, all right, okay, and then Stone, then the glass shard, and then the arena just exploded again, and um, Austin came out, delivered, a, well, fucking hell. You call it one of the worst stunners ever. I don't think it's not, I don't think it's as bad as Linda's, but it was close to. I mean, he didn't get fully around his neck, like there, in the position where he should be for the stunner. It, and the way he fell back after he got kicked in the groin, he was like, Ooh, he was falling back. I was like, wow. And then Austin couldn't help but laugh. And then he had another beer bash. Pat McAfee got stunned. And it, that was a better sell than Vince's. I mean, he just took back like that and then just dropped down. And he was still drinking beer outside the ring after he got stunned. It was really good to see. But now, we move on to the main event of the evening. The so-called biggest match of all time at WrestleMania. The unification winner-take-all match between Roman Reigns, the Universal Champion, and Brock Lesnar, the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. My thoughts on the match... The right person won. Hate me if you want, but Roman deserved to win. Acknowledge him. Simple as that. Brock is a good champion. Don't get me wrong. But Roman, 
he is just levels above. He is levels above. He is the best thing in WWE right now. No one is even close to the marketing phenomenon that is Roman Reigns. Nobody on the roster on SmackDown is even on par with Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is the new megastar. He is the new John Cena. When WWE marketed John Cena out through 2007, well, from when he when he first started, when he first got his major push, right up until the day that he left. And then Roman came around. I mean, the first time they pushed him, it was wrong. It was done all wrong. Fans didn't like it, but now he's developed his character. He's become a, a hideous heel, which I am absolutely a fan of, which should have been done in the first place. Because this Roman Reigns is the best Roman Reigns. And he is the best thing in WWE right now. No one is even close to Roman Reigns in WWE right now. No one is. No one's even close. His mic work's improved. His matches have improved. And there was an injury during the match as well. During the Kimura lock, Roman got to the ropes and he was holding his shoulder and it was out. It was out. You can see it. You can see it clearly hanging out of its socket. And he was like, he was saying to him, and it's out, it's out, it's out. He dislocated his shoulder. And that, I think, was due to Lesnar when he was holding on to the Kimura. And when Roman got to the ropes, he was yanking it. He was yanking it. And that's what probably pulled it out of its socket. But it was a, well, it wasn't even that great a match. It was supposed to go on longer, according to Farm. According to the rumors, it was supposed to go on about, maybe about seven or more minutes. Something like that. But Roman ended up winning thanks to countering the F5 into a spear. One, two, three. And Roman Reigns now holds both the WWE and Universal Championships. The unification, it's bullshit. It needs to it doesn't need to happen. We don't need unification. We tried it before WWE. You tried it with Jericho, it didn't work. You tried it with Orton, didn't work. Tried it with Lesnar, didn't work. Tried it with Cena, didn't work. It didn't work. So stop unifying the main titles. If you keep it with the brand split, two titles on each show. If you're gonna put the brand all together, one title's enough for both shows. Easy. Easy. You don't need two titles for one show. You just need one. Because if you remember, when they when the Undisputed title was around and there was only one show, that champion had to defend it on both Raw and SmackDown. Whoever it was at the time. But now... I don't know what WWE are going to do because I don't think they're going to stick with this unification bullshit. I think it's going to go. I think it's going to go. At some point. There's rumours of a new title on Raw. But what are they going to do with the WWE or Universal title? They're going to abolish one of them? I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see because I can't predict the future. But now I'm looking at the card and overall... I'm saying it was a good card. I mean, some of the matches were boring. Some of the matches were... Definitely under par. But my top three matches on the whole thing were Cody Rhodes versus Seth at number one. Well, actually, I'll go from number three, actually. Number three, I'd say the unification bout. Simply because the right man won. And no, I am a big Roman Reigns fan, as you can see. Acknowledge me. Slag me off if you want in the comments. Number two... I'm going to go with Edge versus AJ Styles. Not the show stealer, but close to. And number one, Cody versus Seth. Simply because I was out of my I was out of my element when Cody's music hit. And then they put on an acclaimed match like that. 21 minutes and 30 seconds of a match. It was good. It was a really good match. But that is it for today's video, guys. If you do enjoy the video, you know what to do by now, peeps. Subscribe to the channel for more content. And until next time, which is going to be Wednesday morning, we shall see you later for the Arsenal Stream Career Mode episode. I can't remember which episode it is, but it is going to be a two-part episode as I've got like shed ton of games in that month. But until next time, we will see you later.